As I mentioned before, more circle is an idea that is really a two-dimensional idea. So it works on two-dimensional states of stress. But there is one case in which you can use it on three-dimensional state of stress, and that's uh, the case where you already know what one of the principal stresses is. So let's go ahead and look at that case and see what comes out of it. So let me consider this state of stress here. So I have in the xy plane, I have a normal stress of 1 KSI and 2 KSI and a shear stress of 1 KSI. And then I have a normal stress in the Z direction of 4 KSI. But there's no shear on the Z plane. And that tells me that the Z plane or the Z direction is already a principal direction of stress. So whenever you have zero shear on a plane, you know that plane is already oriented in a principal direction. Uh, so if I go ahead and draw the picture here for the state of stress that looks as follows, where I put the z-axis kind of coming out at us, the x-axis is in this direction, there's the y-axis, and then the z-axis is here. And so this is state of stress, and you can see on this face here, there's no shear there, so that's already a principal plane of, of, or principal direction of my system. And this allows me to use more circle. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my axes of normal stress and shear stress, and I'm going to go ahead and plot on my graph the principal stress that I already know. That's my 4 KSI. And so that's this little red dot that I've shown here on the axis already. So the units here in my drawing are going to be KSI. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the XY plane. So I look down the Z axis at the XY plane, and I get the mean stress that's going to be one and a half KSI, and I'm going to plot that point also on the horizontal axis. And now I'll go ahead and draw the circle for the XY plane. So I'll plot the stress on the, the X face, which is one KSI normal stress, one KSI shear stress. So remember, shear goes positive down. I'll draw that circle there. And the radius of that circle is 1.12. I can calculate also from the geometry of the points that I've already drawn there. So this, this, is, this is my Moore circle. That's kind of conventional other than I have this extra point, which is the 4 KSI point. Okay. Uh, the intersections of the circle I've drawn here are two of the principal stresses. And so I now have my three principal stresses. There's the 4 KSI, which I already had identified a priori. And there are my two new values, sigma 2 and sigma 3, that I can read off from the diagram. So 2.62 KSI and 0.48 KSI. Okay, so this gives me more circle for the three-dimensional state of stress. I've identified now my three principal stresses from the diagram here. Um, the orientation of the stress element in the principal coordinate frame I can also get from the figure here. So if I rotate uh, clockwise from the state of stress I know over to the minimum value, that's going to be sending the x-axis to the third principal direction. I can redraw my figure as I have it here. So I have 4 KSI in the first principal direction, which is the same as the Z direction. Uh, and then I have 0.48 KSI, that's the 3 direction, and I have 2.62 going in the 2 direction. And so if I look down the Z axis, I have this figure over here where I've rotated 31 degrees in the clockwise direction to get to the third principal axis because it gets me to the th third value of the principal stress there. Okay, So that's the setup that I have here. Now, I can also draw in a second circle, and that's if I connect the first and the second principal stress. And that would be looking at my stress element that I have here and looking down the three axis in at the 2, 1 plane there. Okay, So if I look down the 3 axis in, into the 1, 2, or 2, 1 plane, I can draw this circle for my Moore circle of stress. Uh, so that's, and in fact, if I look directly down that 3 axis here, this is the picture I would see. I'd see 4 KSI going in the 1 direction and 2.62 KSI going in the 2 direction, and that's exactly what this circle shows me. I can, it also gives me a way of interpreting my first circle over here that I drew, I can think of that as looking down the one axis or the first principal axis, and that gives me the first circle that I saw. So each circle that I draw here is can be thought of as looking down one of the principal axes, and that's why you need to know one of the principal axes to start the process off. I can also draw one other circle which connects 
the first and the third principal stress, and that would be as though I was looking down the two axis. So if I look down the, the second principal axis, I'd be looking at a stress element that shows 4 KSI in the one direction and 0.48 KSI in the three direction, and that allows me to draw the third principal uh, circle here. So I get in 3D, you get three circles or for when you try and draw the more circle diagram. Uh, notice that the maximum shear stress overall occurs on the largest circle, so that's the one that connects uh, the first and the third principal stresses. So in this case here, it gives me a value of 1.76 KSI on the system there. Uh, there's one other interesting fact here about three-dimensional states of stress. If you draw on these three circles, then the possible normal and shear stress values that you could see on any plane uh, at any orientation is contained in the, the green shaded region here. So it can, you can get values on the circles themselves and you can get values inside this, this green shaded area. You can get nothing, you can't get values on the interiors of the two inner circles. So this is a way of having a, a visual representation of all the possible normal and shear stresses that one could see at a given point in a body uh, with respect to any orientation of, of plane that you're looking at. So you can get any of these combinations of the traction components by just orienting the plane that you're looking at the traction on. And it has to all be contained in these three circles here. You can't have any values outside the circles and you can't have any values on the interior of the two inner circles.